<laughs> Greetings. What is going on? Uh, this is going on. Look at the new me. Look at you. I don't even know what to make of you. I'm walking around and nobody even sees me anymore because I never look this smart. They're just like, <laughs> what, what? not only that, but I've never worn pink in my life. Um, not for any particular reason other than it's always been a girl's colour. But everybody's saying it suits me more than anything. So I'm now quite attached to um, pink. It does suit you. It does suit you. We're going to work on yellow next. Ooh. Oh, actually, I want some red. I want those um, those shirts, the Czech shirts you do, red and black or red and dark blue. Mm, Scotty vest colours. That would be lovely. <laughs> um, I, I just came back from a, a car show in uh, Monterey, and I've, I'm inspired about coming up with a, a car-inspired uh, jacket. It's going to be so cool. I mean, the there are lots of elements of old-fashioned automobiles and grills and, and, and vents and, and, and uh, you know, quilting in the interior that no one has really applied to garments. And I love those details. So, you know, among other things, if you can envision, you know, taking this area here and taking just a small slice and putting, like, a chrome grill here. I mean, quite, you know, just quite literally like a screen, but a firm screen with something behind it that, that evokes the Bentley or, or mm. you know, type of grill that you would see. And then having, a, you know, a quilted garment that, you know, evokes what you see in, in, in you know, uh, fine Italian race cars and, 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 and the stitching. I mean, there are lots of different elements. So I'm, I'm pretty also, psyched about it. If that jacket or garment that func functioned better in a vehicle as well... So if you look at some of the uh, jackets that people who carry backpacks a lot, um, uh, belted backpacks, their um, pockets are slightly higher so you can still get the belt around the waist. But I find they're the best jackets if you're doing a lot of driving, sitting in a car, uh, especially a, an old car that doesn't have particularly good heating or you've got the top down, you can get good access to higher pockets than the ones that are creased up in your lap. So not only, you know, designed with a car inspired, designed to be worn in a car no I, I said well all our stuff by definition is, is is designed to be worn in a car recognizing that you know people are carrying devices and like for example our pants hat which we don't sell quite yet in the uk but we will but they have a little stitch line so when you get in and out of the the car i hate it when my cell phone drops out or change i lose a pocket full of change every time so I, you know, but I'll take that into further consideration. Um, also, you, know, um, you just want, want to dive right into, you know, the topic of the day, or did you want to press? Uh, and speaking of inspiration, I want to show you a sample at the end of this call of of, of a very close to a, a documentally inspired idea. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, look forward to that. Uh, not sure with the in the audience quite yet. Keep keep that in the uh, DVD extras. <laughs> so uh, yeah i wanted to um i i wanted to talk to you um roughly about your use of social media at the moment and how you are using it because i remember 2009 or 10 i was going to work with a client and uh, not having any big um socially plugged in um clients at that time i wanted to show them what was possible and i and I, everywhere i went on the internet your face would pop up if it wasn't your face it was your adverts and you're tempting me with all this stuff and i'm thinking uh, you know how does he do it is it is there like more of is, is he like three brothers and they all look very similar but no it was just you you were on this channel that channel and the other channel and i said can you send me a snippet a video or audio of what it is you do and back then I was really impressed because you focus quite a lot on analytics and you would adjust your internet presence depending on where people were going and what they were doing is it still the case not to the degree that it once was and it, it, it should be again we, we desire to get back into that space unfortunately I don't believe um, that that social media lends itself towards analytics as much as you would want to believe or hope to believe. I think a lot of it is is building relationships and and because I can't see any real analytics unless someone 
jumps on my website. I can tell when someone comes from Twitter and, and sees the Scotty Best link and goes on my website. I can tell when someone goes from your website onto my website. But I can't tell when someone goes to Twitter and, 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 and retweets something. Uh, I, I can tell retweets separately, but it's, it, I, I can't tell the impact of, of the mind share. Of, of that person and it's you have it's hard to also tell you know on any easy platforms how many people that they influence but you and look, what their you level quite, of influence is how authentic mm, it is and you look quite so relaxed away from, about that now you actually seem quite relaxed about that whereas some people find this um, unmeasurable value and remember there is value outside of the initial dollars that land in your bank after you make the transactions some people can't get their head around that. So I'm very glad you said that because initially it was, we are going to own the internet. We're going to know who moves what, why, where and when. But then I think the more people who started talking about you and having conversations on channels you'd never even heard of, but you'd stumble upon, you kind of maybe realize that, hang on a second, there's the brand awareness, which quite often can't be measured. And this kind of subconscious when somebody says Scotty Vest or, or they're browsing and they see an ad, oh, hang on a second, I heard about that last week and it might have been in a coffee shop. That's difficult to trace. It, it is. And, you know, I, I'm evolving and I haven't gotten completely comfortable with the lack of analytics. Um, uh, but inherently, instinctively, I, I know that it's, it's got to be doing something and it's got to be building on, on itself. The problem is with so much analytics, I don't know if you've ever dug into uh, Google Analytics and, and you can see, you know, I know where people are leaving, how long they're spending, what they're clicking on, where they're coming from. I can see how many people are on my website right now. You can get buried in the analytics. Mm. You know, and it's, it's hard you know, to, to not pay attention to them, but it's also harder to decide which ones are the most important and which ones are that you can't measure. Yeah. So, you know, you take all those things in, in, into account and, um, you know, I know one of the things that we're about to talk about is our, our recent Facebook promotion and some of the Facebook advertising that we've recently done and, and to try to, you know, justify whether it, it made sense. And, and for that purpose, I, I have the lovely Lauren with me who will make an appearance if need be to, to add to that. So, yeah, the whole, the whole sense of analytics and social media is... You know, it's hard to put your thumb on, and um, you know, I, I saw it, your I, I saw your competition. You know, um, get us uh, was it fifty thousand likes? Or fifty thousand likes. That's a lot of likes. Get us fifty thousand likes on Facebook, and we're going to give fifty percent off for fifty hours, which was nice. Nice use of the number fifty, 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 and and I imagine it must be quiet. But whenever I see stuff like that, I kind of a part of me cringes because I'm not a Facebook user. I'm one of the, if you read the British newspapers, is it British newspapers or international newspapers? Anybody that's not a Facebook user is obviously some kind of mass murderer in waiting or terrorist. Personally, it's because I was kicked off Facebook. It's not that I'm hiding. You only have to look at the internet to see I'm not hiding. <laughs> I'm out there. So, you get kicked off Facebook? For not using my real name. So they, they gave me a page... So I'm, you know, facebook.com forward slash documentally is me, but that's not really that you're not a player on Facebook. If you have that page, there's only so much you can do and interact with and people can mention and link back to you. But, and I do, you know, kind of spam Facebook myself by cross posting content in there. But for me, I just, I can see where, why you would be attracted to stuff like this, because it is very easy to measure the conversation in what is effectively a walled garden but for me the serendipitous value that comes over interactions are trapped within that walled garden quite often Facebook doesn't want you venturing outside of all of that and for campaigns especially charities uh, for fan clubs for fan bases there's a lot of people who are you know you've got kind of fan pages I, I totally see the value personally as a person who likes to roam the internet free and wild the whole 
you know, how much is a like worth? How much is a like worth to you? I have no idea. That's what, it drives me up a, a freaking wall. I mean, and, and, and here's the deal, do, uh, uh, Christian, I'm about to call you documentary. Uh, <laughs> the deal is we, start, we started on Facebook very early, and, and we gathered um, friends in a kind of a, a little sly manner. Um, basically, you know, all of our customers, I had a Google account that, you know, I would have emails from all my customers and I would, I would invite all my customers to be my personal friend and, you know, many of them accepted and then I would then invite them to become a fan of Scotty Bass. Well, Facebook pretty quickly caught on and said, we don't like people collecting too many friends too quickly and they changed our algorithms and stopped that and we went from a period of, of, of about 11, got stuck at 11,000 fans or for quite a while, got up to about 14,000 or so and we're sort of stuck there and then we retained someone to help us out in our social media and he said, what I do best is help with advertising on social media. And I've spent thousands of dollars with these major players in advertising on social media and got nowhere. And, you know, I added three likes and was out $10,000 in advertising. And this guy worked magic. And he basically, within one month, took us from 14000 to 45000 like that, and I said, "Well, what? A, what what's the value of a like? I know what the cost is yeah. because you're paying a quarter to fifty cents yeah. for every one, you know. But 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 if they're not going to my website, you know, what is the real value of it? I it, it, stop. It's happening. So, so it's how, happening so quickly. How that, did you know, he do that? How did he he rise the numbers so quickly? He he basically had ad campaigns that, that were effective, and he would measure them daily and change them daily, saying you know and and promote certain posts. And you know, if you looked at our our, our, our Facebook page, we went from a very text heavy Facebook page fan page to lots of beautiful images, saying, "Do you like this image?" And then we we it was my idea to overlay the image with a, a travel quote and and our logo. Mm -hmm. And where where do you think this is? It's something that. You know, one of the reasons why I think Pinterest is taking, not, well, Pinterest too, but also, um, what's the website that uh, all the images, uh, Instagram. Instagram is taken off. So people like pretty pictures. It's easy to interact. It's easy. I like that. You know, I don't have to read anything. I just like that. And I think that that's a large part how we got. So, so we did promoted posts. We did advertising. We did, uh, you know, very targeted advertising. You know, uh, basically advertising to fan, uh, you know, fans of fans, you know, uh, friends of fans, and ge geographic regions, and, and and before we know it, we're at forty-four thousand fans, and we said, whoa, shouldn't we do something when we hit fifty? Mm -hmm. We're going to hit fifty on our own. The contest was, you know, quite frankly, just a marketing promotion because with the advertising, we saw within four days we were going to hit 50, and we decided, well, if we're going to hit it, let's let, let's create an event and make it exciting. You know, I don't think that by... I've never, I've, I haven't seen you give 50%. Oh, no, you do occasionally give 50%, but not on everything. Did you give 50% on everything? So we did this great deal on a few products, a few key products, you know, some winter jackets. You saw, you saw a winter jacket in August. You know, you got to give someone a reason to buy it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Was a good reason to buy it. So, I know, I know. I've got um, wait, one second. I've got this oh. here still oh. tagged. I'm waiting for cold weather. <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, you know, I'm kind of excited about you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, you know, fleece pullovers and um, and anything anything that reminds me of my 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 glorious fleece 5.0 and i can see there's some similarities there it actually looks like it would be good for me to do exercise out late at night because of its uh, uh, reflective sections as well which i don't remember seeing on other stuff so uh, but it's just too damn hot at the moment hence being yeah. in a, in a shirt. so you got to give people an incentive so when we saw 50,000 coming you know it was in this office you know uh, you know 2 weeks ago Lo and I and Laura walked in and said well you know we have some extra products here let's do it so it was it was kind of, and then we sent out uh, an email to all of our you know email subscribers most of which are not necessarily on Facebook i mean we've never done a, a comparison i don't even know how we could you know, just, you know, and we just said if you haven't known, we're pretty active on Facebook. You know, 
you know, please help us get to 50. And I think when we sent that out to about 60,000 people, maybe we got another 2,000. So we're almost there. You know, we're do 44. You, um, do you follow your, your the Scotty Vest tag in Instagram or have you encouraged it to be used? Because I imagine, you know, you have a lot of straight product shots or you have a lot of shots with people doing adventurous things in Scotty Vest. I'd love to see the more kind of abstract product shots, stuff that you wouldn't expect. It might just be some of your clothing hung up in the background of a hotel or, you know, it's, I love searching for images on, uh, in particular, camera images because I've got the Leica M9. It's an absolutely beautiful bit of kit. You search the Leica tag in, um, in oh, Instagram really? and you get some really interesting images. Same, I guess, we, with... You know, we haven't really dialed in Instagram. We've been taking one platform at a time. You know, we, we, you know, we, we've actually... We, we went for the shotgun approach. If you look, I'm on Stickcam, I'm on Ustream, I'm on Instagram. I, I even have an old MySpace page. I mean, I, you, um, I did, you did a lot of uh, pl video blogging on YouTube. I mean, I, I am everywhere you can imagine. And then we go ahead and retarget, which we're doing retargeting now through Facebook on an experimental basis as well. Um, and then we sort of decided, well, let's focus on a few platforms and do them really well. And we've done, I think, a, a fantastic job, especially recently on Facebook. And now we're pulling back and, and, and now we're not advertising fairly at all just to see, are people liking us mm. when, when we don't pay them to like us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, that oh. is a great blog title. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and then there was a whole, I, I freaked out because I read this article about um, people in Indonesia that are just liking people, um, you know, they're creating fake accounts and liking people knowing that they're advertising. Then no one's gaining at all. Everyone's losing. Someone has got to go to the trouble of making these fake things and going to trouble and liking. And the people that lose are the advertisers. And there's an article about this. And fortunately, you know, we, we we're limiting who we're advertising or, or what countries we're advertising with. So tell so, me, tell me about Pinterest because, uh, you know, there was a time, I don't know if it's still the case, that the users of Pinterest were very, very heavily uh, slanted towards females. Uh, so women were using, you know, it seems more than a few. Come on, Lauren. I, you know, I'm just I wondering if, there. if yeah. you were being selective. Yeah. Were you being it's selective the one, over the product that you were posting? It's the one area that I, I, I know little, uh, very little about Pinterest. I don't get it. I, I, hi, uh, hi, Lauren. Yeah, shoulder. I have a penis. Maybe that's why. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> there are guys on it. I mean, do you, you use it, right? I use it. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, but it is kind of. Come into frame a little bit more. You're kind of half hiding, like that looked like my avatar. Um, yeah, so I wasn't sure whether or not because it was quite female focused originally, um, you were just going to start, I guess, plugging some of the female uh, clothing that you do because not many people know that you've got such a large range. Yeah. So what we kind of, when we first like created our Pinterest, which was when was that, like in the, probably April? Um, so it hasn't been going that active for that long, but we just had all of our products just pinned up there, and it was... And we paid someone to take thousands of images and pin them up, and lo and behold, you know, we just thought if you build it, they will come, and yeah. they did. So yeah, you right. went about it a little more intelligently recently. Yeah, and I think the thing with Pinterest is it such, has that such creative, inspirational aspect. You know, when we had images of, it was basically screenshots from our website of the products, you know, yeah. with the white background. Now that, that, that's okay, providing it's done within context of what Scotty Vest, the company, is inspired by. We just had a brief conversation over how you're talking about potentially doing some car or vehicle-inspired clothing. Now, I would love to see you go around the internet, Scott, for a couple of hours of an afternoon and find body, you know, body parts of cars, car parts, and say, oh, this grill or this wing mirror. When I customize my motorbike... That's an awesome idea. Yeah, I've, 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 got, I've got gigs of photos. Oh, totally. Well, you don't have I to upload could, I could create my own pin board yeah, on yeah, you, but you and don't ask have people to. to help vote and see which ones they, they like best, either for cars or for, for, for the inspiration yeah. that I'm going with. Exactly. Not only that, but where you live. Where are you based? You don't have to upload your own pictures. Remember this. 
you can actually adjust the URL of existing pictures out there, but the value is in linking back to other people as much as you are linking to your own product. The key for me here is everything that goes to make Scotty Vest, the dreams, the ideas, the inspiration, the design, it's all a part of your brand. It's not just about this is what we've got to sell. So for me to feel connected with what you have to offer, I, I mean... Let's face it, initially it was because I liked you and what you were doing, Scott. I didn't give a shit about any corporate brand, excuse the swearing. Um, because you were so personal, I wasn't talking to a logo. I was talking to a person. But if I could get inside your head, that's where the relationship really begins. Oh, I had no idea that you designed that jacket because of this. And, um, and it might be that as soon as I, I, I will understand more why you send me random images from ski lifts if I got to see exactly where your office was placed, that would be fascinating. What's your working yeah, environment like? You know, let me talk on that for, for a moment because that's what I, I thought that would be fascinating to a lot of people. And I thought, you know, you know, just the nature of how I design something, what, you know, my relationship with my poodles and, you know, just where I am and, and, and just, and what I found, Christian, you know, is Every time I went to a place, I would put the camera in front of me and I'd start talking, right? Take a picture. And and I, I haven't got any you know real clear evidence of this, but my sense is that people don't give a shit about me. You know, they want to see a pretty picture of the mountain without me. They yeah. want me to go away and take cool images and, 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 and what they care about about me if, if I post something that I did stupid. Like I I went out, you know, I went on this trip and I left my hotel room. And I got all the way to my destination, 25 minutes away, and I said, damn, did I leave the safe open? Yeah. A lot of cash in there. So I tweet. I went on Facebook and I wrote that. And then everyone's just commenting, like, immediately, what an ass I am. And I, of course, get back and I take a picture of the safe, properly closed. And, you know, so I don't know. I, would, I, I started this social experiment. I thought that people would be interested in me. And then people started calling me an egomaniac. And it's not... Yeah, it's not about, yeah, if you are leaping in front of every beautiful thing that you see and saying, I love this, love me, then, yeah, people are going to say maybe ego is getting in the way. But when you have a, you know, I say personal, but I'm saying Scotty Vest, you know, page on Pinterest, for example, and you're sharing things that inspire you, and I'm saying you do it, not necessarily anybody else do it, what they're seeing is through your eyes. Now, whether they like you or not, they will be getting to know you better. And if they feel an affinity with the things you are sharing, they're going to associate beautiful things, interesting scenes with Scotty Vest, whether you like it or not. If you're in every single photograph, that is going to look a bit shit because it it's almost like you falsely saying, um, I like this, check me out. I like this, check me out. Whereas people will check you out whether you like it or not, being connected. It's like at the moment... Uh, I was talking about, I designed my motorbike and I have no idea how I wanted it to look in its entirety. But by going out and finding all the things that inspired me about other motorbikes, this exhaust bike, this handmade seat in leather, this, this, this and this, and putting it on one board, I then sent it to the designer who said, we are right inside your head now, we know exactly what you like. And then I was produced the bike exactly that I dreamt it should look like. Now, for them to have done that from this selection of images blew me away. But I'd help with that. The thing is, when people are resharing those great images elsewhere, they get pulled back into my stream. And they get to see my other boards. And one of those boards might be product in exciting places or, you know, designing new stuff. And it, it could be more and more stuff directly related to your company that's a side effect of people going, who are these people? What are they about? And I, I think you're in it for the long tail. The same with all the platforms. It's not about do it now, quick hit. It's about generally opening up, which you've always done, really, but maybe yeah. in a non-in-your-face way. No, I think that's a really helpful thing. And, and, and as a result of this, you know, where do you see these pictures? I mean, they're really cool. And I, I want to share them with my, you know, a clothing designer. I, I, I got so stoked about you know, creating this jacket and, uh, you know, so, and, um, and, and to share my design process with people, I think would be interesting and compelling. These are great conversations. I, you know, I, I don't want to bore your users or, or 
your watches were 24 minutes. I mean, I'd like to continue, you know, doing this, uh, you know, this sort of format and take any comments that you or your, your, your viewers might have and you might have. I mean, just keep it free forming and, and try to report back on, on, on what we've learned. I mean, really implement something like yeah. this in this case. The takeaway is pictures. Did I answer all of your you criticisms and questions on no, Facebook? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. And, and, you know, we would have this conversation whether or not it was being videoed. That is, if it has been videoed, okay. Uh, it's just very nice to archive it because if anybody does have, you know, the patience of a saint and they have actually watched... Oh, maybe we should throw in a password now and offer them. Um, what's my code? If someone puts in a code on 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 Scotty Vest, how much money do they get off? Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. But does it yeah. work on Amazon UK? Uh, no, just not yet. Can we can we use coupons on Amazon? I don't know. I'll look into that. I'm not sure. Well, already people know that if they are watching this and they've got this far, if they put in. Documentally, or is it Doc Twenty? D O C U Twenty. D O C U Twenty. On your landing page. It's on your landing page, but I don't. Do we'll there. find out if it works because we really need to. to so work if you go out. to doc, if you go to documentally dot com and go onto any of the blog pages and scroll down, there's a button on the right hand side that says Scotty Vest all over it. That will take you. Um, that will take you to your page. But um, and they should have a ward and maybe a little cup and a, and a cheer for even listening as far as this. <laughs> Or if you fast forward, <laughs> if you fast you forward, email me point, if you made it this far. Yeah. Scott at scottybass.com. <laughs> I don't even know if England has enough internet connection to upload videos this big. I don't think I ever have. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have to part one and part two. I didn't realize we talked for twenty-four minutes. It's too. It's too interesting. Seriously, I, every, that's the thing. Every one, time I get on the phone with you, I mean, whether recorded or not, you know, I really enjoy your insights and and there, there's something about uh, Americans' love of that British accent and humor. You know, we could just you just talk to me, and you know, it doesn't matter about what. You know, that's what the girls are supposed to say. You're not supposed to say that to him. Well, he's wearing yeah, a pink shirt. it would have sounded better Sorry. coming from Lawrence Scott, but thanks. Comes full circle. <laughs> he just talk to me. Is it because we sound like the BBC and everything we say is the truth? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. cool. Well, I, I will, let's set this up again for next week, and um, we'll report back. We'll have something. We'll, uh, we'll clearly have a Pinterest page um, by then on uh, on the car inspired stuff, and we'll share we'll share the development of that jacket. I think it's be very cool. But yeah, no one yeah. copy it. Help me design it. No eye gears out there. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, just flat out copying it. But uh, help me design it. I'd love to see if that happened. You know, that just some overhearing a conversation. Hey, we could start planting fake information. Say, <laughs> say you're inspired this week by vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to sign off. Take I'll care, talk man. to you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.